Well, welcome back. Well, we're nearly there. So, we've got our basic structure built and a little beauty she looks. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is installing the gear and there's various different options and I'm just going to talk you through some various different ways of doing it. Uh, so let's crack, up, crack on with this and uh, we're close to test flying. Okay, let, let, let's just run through a few processes which we're going to have to uh, do to make this work properly. At the moment, we don't have the control wires installed, and what we're going to need to do is make sure that we've got our radio gear installed before we start adding those wires. Now, the first thing I've done is I've checked where the uh, it says in the instructions about the centre of gravity and it says the centre of gravity is just behind the spar which puts it there so my advice is is whatever your gear we're going to use and we're going to talk about that in a moment I've got this lovely little uh, it's actually a stand but what doubles up as a C or G uh, balancer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to get my C of G. So what we really want to do first is we want to get all our bits of electronics that we're going to use and then um, add them just roughly to see where we need to try and come out with the balance. Okay, so the installation of the radio control equipment, let's talk about what the um, actual glider was designed for and how we can vary off of that. So, um, it mentions this type of brick. This is what's known as a brick receiver. So the idea is it's very tiny. You have two motors here and what they do is they drive um, through these gears, they drive these little output shafts up and down in a linear scale. So, there's that option. In the kit, or in the instructions, they're talking about using this battery. Now I got this one from uh, Hobby King, it's a Turnergy. It's 3.7 volts and it's 150 milliamp hours and it weighs four grams so that's one option so what I would suggest you do is if you're going to go this option what we're going to do is we will put this um, in its place so the brick is roughly going to sit in there and we need to make sure that we get the in orientation around the right way and I will talk about that when we come to actually putting the installation this is just working out so giving us some idea of balance because we want to try and get this sorted out now while the equipment is still movable. So as per the instructions that little brick receiver is going to sit there and that sits in the front like so. Now the issue is is that to get the correct C of G using the uh, little frame that I got from uh, Angel Wings means that I've actually got to add a fair bit of weight. In fact, it's actually, to get it to get the C of G sitting right, I'm going to have to add 10 grams. So I've got a battery weighing 4 grams, and I'm going to be sticking 10 grams in the front like so, to actually be able to get this glider to balance right. Now that's quite a lot of lead. And they do say in the instructions that you, you obviously you have to use some lead to put it in front. Now, I <laughs> right. So they do actually say in the instructions you're going to need to add some lead, um, and that's a fair bit of lead to add in the front with such a tiny battery. But you can see there, if I just do it by my hand, it's perfectly balanced now. Now, the other option is, is we could use a bigger battery and smaller weight. So this is a second option which I'm more likely to favour and I'll give you my arguments for in this case. This is a, this again is a Turnergy which I got from Hobby King. It's the same voltage, 3.7 volts. This is 650 milliamp hours. It's going to last for hours even running with the uh, electric power pod. Now let me show you something. So, the, the second option is to fit the Turnergy in. It fits right up the front, as per the uh, other battery. 
So we haven't got a real issue with inertia and changing the weights. The other difference is now this one and this, this battery weighs 13 grams. I'm only having to add just over a gram just to get that to balance in the same place. Look at that, that's balanced in exactly the same place. So, I think I'm going to favour this battery. The benefits are, yes, uh, it's going to last a lot longer. Um, the other thing is, is um, it, it's just easy for me to wire up. Um, now, the other issue with using this brick, if this is your first attempt at flying one of these, um, the brick receiver comes with one of these. Now, I'm going to use this because I've never used one of these transmitters. I'm quite keen to use this. But let's talk about using standard radio control equipment in exactly the same way. Now, here's two cheap, they are 3.7 gram micro servos that I literally got cheap off another project. Um, these are available and I would be installing one here like so and one there like so uh, and I would just I would hot glue those straight down. Now what we do need to do is we need to make sure that if we're going down this route we're going to do exactly the same as we did with the um, micro um, brick receiver. So all I'm doing is I'm going to pop that on there like so. Now bearing in mind the difference with this is we are going to have to include a receiver uh, which would come in standard radio control equipment kit, a micro receiver. So let's just pop that on there like so. So this is my 650. Now, using standard servos, well these 3.7 gram servos, I would say you might just have to add just a little bit more weight, purely because some of those servos a little just go a little bit further aft. So if you're using standard servos, um, same thing. Now remember, if you're going to use standard servos with a standard receiver, and we're talking about possibly adding the power pod, you are going to have to look at buying yourself a speed controller as well if you want to use the power pod. But if you want to start off with just using this standard Turner G650 battery, two, two um, standard servos, the receiver um, will fit in the back there easily. Yes, you'll have to adjust the weight. You will get days of flying on that battery. Okay, so at the moment I have the brick receiver that I'm gonna use and I've just got it attached for convenience to another battery. So when I, what we're going to make sure is that we get the brick around the right way. Now let me just pan in here and show you what's happening. When I move the stick, it's out of focus isn't it? There you go. Right, when I move the stick to the left can you see that this is moving forward, backwards. When I go to the right, it goes backwards. Now, what we want to do is, is make sure that when we move the stick to the left, so I'm using mode two, so I'm using all the controls on one joystick. So I'm moving the joystick to the left to instigate a turn. So let me show you what we want to happen. The rudder moves to the left. Let me just show you that. So when we do that, that the rudder will, so that gives me an idea that we've got the brick round the wrong way. Because if I put the brick in like so, and do that, that's the rudder. And when I go left, what's actually happening is it's going to push it and go right. So we now know that the orientation of that brick should be that way. Okay, um, let me talk you through how I've installed this brick because uh, if you're installing one of these um, all-in-one receiver servo it's there's a specific technique so what I've done is I fed the wires through from the tail and then made a point of putting some tape just a folded a bit of tape over the end to stop them getting drawn back the next thing I did was I actually bent them at 
90 degrees put them in place and then use some hot glue on the ends this stops them coming out when I was happy I then dropped some hot glue and then actually sat the servo down so that's that they are now ready to go so that's now ready to operate I've checked it's all running smoothly so the only thing we have to do now one of two things if you're just using this as a glider all we're going to do now is to what you want to do is get yourself a little bit of um, scrap bolsa and the idea is is I would suggest you pop these over there like so that holds your control surface in place then the idea is offer up the uh, wire like so then you can then mark it then if you want to you can then bend um, to suit and then uh, I'm then going to glue that in place now and um, I'm just going to drop a little bit of hot glue over the end um, you can also to hold these in place the, the ends in place if you've got a little bit of heat shrink you can pop a little bit of heat shrink on it shrink it down and then just wick a little bit of super glue in but that's my next step and that's how I got to this stage in the first place. Right, okay, so one of the last things we need to do is, um, this is the little power pack that comes with it, so that the, well, the frame. So the idea is we're gonna cut these two out. These are gonna get stuck together and then glued down this center line. Um, this then means that when we put, we can actually attach some bands either side and that will hold it in place. This is a part of the kit buying the motor and everything is actually extra um, if you've got your gear installed already um, and you just want to use it as a slope saw you don't use this but this gives you the facility to be able to use this uh, from a flat field right she's finished one micro gentle lady um, I've hooked it up to my setup at the moment is I've put the power pod on I'm using the park zone brick system um, so just give you some idea of the controls, that's the rudder controls, elevator, uh, power. Um, I've got to be honest with you, I'm in a very fortunate position, Is uh, I live at the coast and I've got plenty of um, sites that I can slope from. So I've done this as a test. But I think in general I'm not going to be flying with the um, power pod because I just I don't need to. But I thought because it comes in a kit, I'd do the whole thing. So she's run out at um, 60 grams. Uh, more than pleased with that. The CAG is absolutely spot on. Now, little tip about using the power um, unit: just make sure that you can slide the power pack. So what you want is you want the weight, the motor, most of it over the C of G. If you pull it right forwards, it's going to end up making it nose heavy and also if you go too far back it's tail heavy. Um, I've just got bands either side of the pod um, and all I've got to do now is think of a Covid safe way of me being able to um, test fly this. <laughs>